So urethanol A, when I first learned about your product, I thought, how can I know so much about cellular health, about nutrition, about detox, fasting? And I'd never heard of urethanol A. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about it? Because again, when I first started trying Timeline, I was shocked at how much more consistent energy I had throughout the day. And mm -hmm. so it made me fascinated by this one particular, and it's a prebiotic, right? It's, yeah. It's Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, oh, it's a postbiotic. Yeah. So urolitin A is a gut metabolite. So it's made by the gut microbiome. That's the link to the microbiome mitochondria that I was talking about. So a lot of us uh, are eating the right foods, such as the pomegranate or the walnuts and pecan. So if you're eating things like what are known in, in, even in the Mediterranean diet, or if you're just sticking to healthy foods and uh, nuts, uh, like raspberries, for example. Now, these contain a lot of antioxidants that we know are good for you. But what we discovered was that it was not these antioxidants or polyphenols that are, so for example, in the pomegranate is the richest source of polyphenols called elegitanins. Now, elegitanins have been studied or pomegranates have been studied for, for thousands of years, hundreds of clinical studies, some going in favor, some not going in favor. What we discovered was depending on the gut microbiome you have, and you may have it or you may not have it, you may have levels of a molecule that has the postbiotic urolitin A. And if you do produce urolitin A, your mitochondria are much better shape. So when we started studying it, we found that only about 30% of the healthy adult population was had some levels of urolitin A in their blood when we look at the blood levels of urolitin A. So we figured out why not directly calibrate and give, you know, sort of direct doses of postbiotic and see if that would have a sort of a cellular rejuvenation effect on, on our muscle cells. And that's how we got into to urolitin A. So I, I'm thinking about the woman who's maybe been on multiple antibiotics, uh, maybe decades of birth control, and her gut is completely destroyed. And then she comes, you know, roaring into her menopausal year years and now has a major shift in hormone production from her ovaries to her adrenals. Her stress is super high. Uh -huh. And so now her she's noticing more muscle wasting, more muscle soreness. She's not sleeping. Her moods are off. I mean, the whole, I can paint the whole picture for you because I have been her. So what I just heard is that there could be a link between the lifestyle we had in our younger years and production of urethanol A as we move into our older years. And that if we are supplementing with urethanol A, not only is it giving the mitochondria a nutrient, I'll just call it that even though it's a postbiotic, a nutrient that it needs to be able to give us ATP for energy, but is it possible with the addition of urethanol A, does it repair the microbiome from all the destruction we we endured in our younger years? So I'll tell you my personal story. I grew up in India and in India, when you're sick as a kid, you always get antibiotics, so you're respected, whatever, you know, it's a viral yeah. illness or a bacterial illness. And so I took, a, I got a, exposed to a lot of antibiotics and, and then I moved to the States and I then finally last 15 years in Switzerland. And so the first time I, 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 we discovered this molecule, I actually bled myself uh, and, and started looking at if, you know, after drinking a glass of pomegranate juice, pure 100% squeezed pomegranates, my body will make it or not. My body just refused to make it. And so then I went on months of eating only berries and nuts and sort of whole fresh food diet. I could never change my microbiome. And, and so that actually led to this whole idea. Well, then there are so many folks and we've looked actually, we've looked in, in the U.S. We've lived in France and Italy. We've lived in Canada. It seems like the more exposed to fermented foods, the more exposed to sort of the Mediterranean diet you are. These are the areas of France, Italy, where we see this 30, 40% people who have. U.S. Canada ah. is like it's like 10%, right? So whenever yeah. you'll hear me say, oh, 30% people, healthy adults can make it. Well, it's it depends on their geography. So in the U.S., we've done hundreds of uh, people in the, in a clinical trial. Only 12% came with some level of urolitin A. So there are probably more people eating, let's say, the healthy diet. And then, so we, we then gave them the healthy diet and we saw that you could convert about 30% in the, even in the U.S. population to making the molecule. But that brings the question, why are the other 60%? 70% never able to make it. 
And the answer lies in the gut microbiome. It's really the richness. It's really the diversity. So I think you can probably change it, but that requires months and months of, you know, sticking to a fermented diet and, and really following it. And that's where direct supplementation really helps because you can actually give that those high levels of, of uh, urolithin A, which is a cellular nutrient, exposure to to your body and for those, you know, for that, for this nutrient. If you add in urethanol A, is that now something you got to add in every day for the rest of your life? Or is there a moment you get, you're like rehabbing the mitochondria and you're getting them back up to speed so that they can produce the ATP you want all, all on their own? So we've done a number of randomized cl placebo controlled clinical trials. What we see is that you need to give, it's not a magic pill, right? It's like caloric restriction or intermittent fasting. You need to give your cells the time to repair. So that's the first month kind of where we see the mitochondrial or if we take biopsies or if we take blood cells and we look in their mitochondria after one month of supplementation, we see that the, now the mitochondria are in this sort of new growth phase. And then when we give them we'll give the, the supplementation longer for two to four months, we start seeing the whole body effects. Mm -hmm. Now, the question you're asking is, well, after that, can you wean off and then maybe your, your mitochondria will be in, in good shape? Well, I think you will have some much like exercise exercise or fasting, if you stick to a regimen, you will get the benefit out of it. But as soon as you drop, you know, if you not become non-compliant to it, you're probably at a certain point going to lose the effects and then you'll have to redo the whole regimen again. So I think there's it's in the same category because we know the biological pathway that we are hitting is the same as what exercise or, or fasting is hitting. I'm such a fan of like a multi-therapeutic approach where we're pulling in a lot. And I, and I think as, I just want to make sure everybody's catching the through line of everything we're saying. If you're looking at fasting, you're looking at fermented foods, you're exercising, um, you're working on your stress, and you're adding in something like urethanol A, there, there becomes this mitochondrial lifestyle that you you are now in sync with that is going to slow down the aging process. If somebody comes to a product like Timeline and they want to use it for the first time, it would make the most sense to me that you would make sure you're doing those other pieces I just mentioned and that there would be a bit of a power up phase where you're coming in with perhaps a high dose of urethanol A for a period of, like you said, for let's say three to six months. And then there would be a maintenance dose after that. Because the way I see the body is that if we're always doing the same thing at the same time over and over again, we're not applying any hormetic stress. We're not tricking the cell to move into a different action that we want it to move in. So have you all looked at if you come in with a therapeutic dose and then a maintenance dose with urethanol A and what that would look like? No, we haven't done those studies, but I can tell you because I have get a lot of real world because we've, you know, now have thousands of customers on it. And that actually led us to to develop tests even where, you know, if you would first know if you get to know, uh, and we haven't lost the test, but that's sort of in a prototyping clinical uh, studying phase where if you can already know where your urolatin A levels are, are you a producer? Are you not a producer? Mm -hmm. If you are a producer, are you a low producer? Are you a very high producer, meaning that your gut microbiome already is in great shape to, to harness some of the, you know, urolatin A for, from, from the dietary exposure? Then you, you, you stick to a dose we know, which is around 500 milligrams and you stay on it, right? Because then you're mm. getting these other exposures. Now, for someone like me, whose body just refuses to make your litane, I always say, well, you, then you need to, and then again, you have to gauge as a practitioner or, or as, you know, where this person is in terms of their whole body health, right? If they yes. are in a stressful state, then you start with a higher dose, as you're saying, and then after a few months, switch them to a lower maintenance dose. I think that, I think it's really on a case by case. Uh, you have yeah. to really look at that as that. Yeah. And I think like when you said it earlier, like NAD, CoQ10, I think methylene blue is a real popular one right now that a lot of people are using for mitochondrial health. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've learned in the research that I saw on urethanol A is, and what I'm hearing you say is it's necessary nutrient and for those mitochondria. And so when you're giving that on a consistent basis, just like if you get, if you decide 
decide to dive into NAD shots or methylene blue IVs, like you're giving these mitochondria a nutrient that it's being depleted of as it's aging. And as we age, we really have to think about this more. So this is what I really want to bring to everybody's attention is, yeah, maybe your 30-year-old self didn't need to, to think about this, but your 50-year-old self that may not feel like your 30-year-old self needs to start to think of all the ways you can power up those mitochondria and it becomes more necess more of a necessity as we age. I 200% I agree with that. So I think the way I see you, and I've always seen your today, it's sort of the, the foundation, right? So if you've got your cellular health in good shape, if you've got your mitochondria repairing themselves at a much faster rate, even if you're taking NAD supplementation, now you, you'll you absorb NAD better, right? Because now right. You're, you've rewired your mitochondria to be in a much better energetic state. So they're absorbing, whether it's multivitamins or protein, you know, that is coming in or amino acids through this protein synthesis pathway or NAD. You're just going to have, and that's, I know that a lot of people like to stack in the community, take multiple supplementation. I think that's how I see it. It's really the foundation strategy that people need to think about is to improve the the sort of uh, repair capacity of your cells. And that's how I saw it too. When I started to dive into looking at Erythanol A, I was like, wow, why are we so excited about NAD? Why are we so excited about all these other things? But we haven't really highlighted this one postbiotic. So I'm glad that I was seeing that through the same lens that you created Timeline for.